Thank you, Peter, and thank you to the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk this morning. Um, so as Peter mentioned, I'm going to uh, talk uh, about the um, uh, research and survivorship programs uh, that, that PCC is, has, been, has launched and is about to launch. Um, just to give you an overview of the PCC programs, um, now this is a, 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 a schematic showing really how uh, research findings go from discovery through development to delivery of, uh, of, of healthcare programs. So really when we talk about disco discovery, it's really, so I use this one, this is probably the pointer. This is really about research actually uh, um, under getting, generating uh, new knowledge or gaining evidence about a, a particular area of, uh, of health. Uh, of health. Um, once, once this has been de defined and identified, it then moves to a development phase where you actually put in the context that it's going to be used. So either it's in a patient or a, or a, or a health system context. And then this leads to delivery of a, a healthcare program. And so this is kind of the, the continuum from discovery, research to development delivery. So where do you, um, PCC's programs fit into this? Well, so research, as I mentioned, is really predominantly at the discovery stage, although there is some research that, that we, we do fund and will fund in the development, further development of, of the, uh, the findings in the, in, in the research piece, the discovery piece. And then obviously research in, into how, how best to deliver the uh, health services, health programs. Um, from a support services perspective, the, the, uh, the, the triangle is inverted in that, that the or our efforts are predominantly in the delivery stage. And although we don't deliver health care, it's not, it's not in our mandate to deliver health care, we deliver support services and education materials, information to, uh, to, the, to the Canadian public and to survivors. And, and with that, there's also um, you know, ref con continual refinement of those tools and, and the services we provide. And, and this has to be based on evidence. So there's a, there's a research or discovery piece to this as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus my part of the talk on, on, on the research piece. And I'm going to invite Maureen Rollins, who I know that Steve introduced earlier, to talk um, in much more detail about the, uh, the support services aspect of the work we're doing. So, so um, the, we, we have some, I'll, I'll go and talk about the research strategy in a few minutes, but um, we, we are continually funding research and have funded research over, over a number of years. And so I want to talk a bit about the programs that have been very successful in supporting prostate cancer research and making a contribution to the knowledge of, 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 uh, of prostate cancer in, in globally. Um, and I've defined these as open competitions and strategic programs. So open competitions, these, these are programs that really any researcher in the country can apply to, to, to get funding from, as long as they fit certain eligible cri eligibility criteria. So the first is a pilot grant program, and this is, a, this is um, providing project funding for, for researchers. So it'll, it'll, it'll pay, pay um, uh, for, for key staff, so students and technicians on, uh, that are working on a specific project, and, and, and pay for... Uh, are consumables like um, tubes and uh, um, other, uh, other reagents that they need to, to, to be able to answer a, a, a fundamental hypothesis that they have about, about prostate cancer research. And this, because it's a pilot grant, we actually want to focus on generating very, very new information. This is, this is information that no one else in the world has ever, ever, ever found and ever looked at this area before. So it's very early in the, the kind of, that, that, um, that continuum I showed you before, it's very early the discovery stage. Um, since 2007, we funded a, um, 100 pilot grants, and we're currently funding 36 pilot grants, and these are going to continue over the next year or so. Um, the second open competition are Clinician Scientist Awards, and one, one of the things, if you recall that, that continuum of discovery development to uh, delivery, uh, um, a really important um, player in that in making sure that those findings from research go into the clinic and go into the delivery phase uh, are, are clinician scientists. These are people that actually are urologists, radiation oncologists, people that actually actively see patients but also actually do research. And so they can be the conduit to actually move that information much faster into the clinic. And so we've, um, we, we, did, we launched a program in 2009 to really, to really support junior people in, at, at this, this kind of level and, and this expertise of being both clinician and, and, and a researcher. So really, we know that if we, if we, if we get them young um, into prostate cancer research, they'll stay in prostate cancer research, and this is a way that we can, we can, we can build the next generation of uh, clinician, re clinician scientists in the future. We, we've, we've supported, since 2009, we've supported 10 clinician scientists, and we currently have uh, four clinician scientists on, 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 um, that we continue to fund. Um, then it comes to the strategic programs we, we, we support. 
Um, and the, the first is the CPC Gene pro Project, and this is a project where we're, um, we're uh, it's a team of researchers across the country, led, led um, from, a, from a, a really a senior investigator in Toronto, and, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to understand patterns of DNA in, in guys with prostate cancer. And then once they, once they identify certain patterns, they can then use those to, to detect prostate cancer earlier and, or, or, or to determine whether certain treatments work more effectively in certain individuals. So it's a very promising study we're, we're funding there. That's, that's been supported by um, Movember. Um, the second study um, is a BRCA1 and 2 study. And this is, this is understanding um, what... So BRCA1 and 2 are, are genes, so that there are parts of the DNA that have been linked to, um, that have, uh, been linked to lead to risk of um, breast cancer, and there's been lots of studies <coughs> linking it also to prostate cancer in guys. And so this study is actually determining what the risk of, of having a BS, B, B, um, being BRCA1 and 2 positive to actually leading to prostate cancer. And the final um, strategic program that we support is, is a program in Vancouver that's looking at um, uh, androgen-resistant prostate cancer and looking at um, new treatments for this, uh, this, this, this prostate cancer. So that's a kind of, in a nutshell, the programs that we've we funded in the past, and, and as I said, we, we, we will fund some of these programs in the future. And, and what that, that's, and if we, if we look at the, our investment in research since 2005, it's, it's been pretty flat until 2008, and then, then we see this sudden increase, and this is largely due to the funds that, we've, that, that have been raised through, through November. And, and with this sudden increase, it, it, it really um, provided a great opportunity to start thinking much more strategically about how we're going to invest in, in prostate cancer research. And that led to the development of the uh, PCC research strategy. So the, 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 the vision of the research strategy is to establish programs to support research that have the greatest potential to improve prostate cancer prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and better manage survivorship. It really is about having impact. We want to make sure that we're having positive outcomes for the research. It's not about doing research for research's sake. We want to actually move the needle significantly to actually, um, for the benefit of all guys and, and, and their families that are affected with prostate cancer. So we went through a, a, a pretty um, intense planning process that started with my arrival at PCC in February. Um, we assembled an advisory panel. Uh, we conducted an environmental scan. We, we, we sought the views of, of researchers and, and other stakeholders through, through surveys. Um, and then we, we brought the information we gathered from various sources back to the, the, uh, the panel and uh, identified what the priorities would be for, uh, for a strategy. And I'll, I'll talk about these steps in, in a bit more detail now. So we, the, the research advisory panel that we put together, we, we picked 31 of the best minds in prostate cancer research in the country. We pulled them together. We really wanted to tap into their knowledge of, the, of what's going on in the country and where they felt that were the, were the biggest gap areas. And we, the, the, uh, the composition of this panel um, covered the, the whole waterfront of, of clinical um, clinicians, so radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, um, urologists, together with basic researchers, epidemiologists, survivorship researchers, so really across the board. We had every, every voice um, uh, around this table. And I've highlighted the, the, um, the, the, uh, the people in blue here, and they were, they were members of the, uh, the steering committee that provided more timely and direct input on the strategy. The others were, were more uh, corresponding uh, members, so, so they actually um, provided their input and opinions by email during the process. So, Getting to the goals of the strategy, it really was to, to as I mentioned before, to, uh, to describe strategic investments in prostate cancer research that have the greatest impact on the disease. Um, we wanted to make sure that we develop programs that would build and sustain a research community. We, we know we have an outstanding research community. They've just been starved of funding for so long. And we, we, we know that how, um, what a great con contribution the research community has made in prostate cancer in, in this country, and, and, and we're excited about what they can do with, with additional funds. And so, so we need to make sure we're, we're, we're supporting them with the best programs. And then lastly, to make sure we're, 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 train, we're, we're training and retaining the next generation of prostate cancer researchers, so we can actually have success in many, many years to come. So we, we, we established some principles by, uh, as we built the strategy. We, we, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We wanted to build on and leverage existing research projects. We wanted to make sure that we were making the right selections about um, uh, which projects we were going to fund, so build in a rigorous peer review, and I'll talk a bit about the peer review later on. We want to make sure that we're providing opportunities for partnerships, uh, provincially, nationally, internationally. 
Um, we want to evaluate um, the, the, the strategy and make sure we're, 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 we're having the success we want to have. Um, we want to be responsive to novel opportunities in prostate cancer as well. So building that flexibility that if a, a major finding comes out in, in the UK in prostate cancer, then we're, we're well positioned to be able to capitalize on that and build from it. From it. And then obviously achieve results that will strengthen the ability to raise extra funds for prostate cancer research as well. So we can actually build more funds into, this, into the prostate cancer research system to get more success. So, so um, we thought that one of the first steps was to understand the environment of prostate cancer research in the country. Just to, what research is going on, who's doing what, where. Um, and this will be a good, really set the landscape of, uh, of what we can build upon. So we're fortunate that the Canadian Cancer Research Alliance, which is an alliance of 33 of the major funders of cancer research in the country, um, publish a report every year that actually um, really paints a picture of, of cancer research funding across the country. And we could pull the information from that and actually uh, um, pull the prostate cancer information from that and actually get a good sense of what was going on. Um, and we found that 24 different research entities from the provincial government, federal government, and charitable sector actually fund prostate cancer research. So when you look at the, the priorities for research from the different sectors, and I've, I've, I've listed this down as really people, so funding actual individuals, so, so whether that's uh, trainees or, uh, or um, lead investigators or projects, so actually the projects to actually do the work. Or, um, or places, so this is really infrastructure, equipment, buildings, and that kind of thing. When you split that out by, by sector, the government funds, um, oh, sorry, uh, the government funds all these areas um, through, through various agencies, whether it's the Canadian Institute for Health Research, whether it's the Canadian Foundation for Innovation. There are m many government entities that actually cover off all these areas. When it comes to host university and hospitals, um, obviously they fund people because they pay, they pay their staff who are largely um, have teaching commitments in universities and hospitals, or they're actually providing frontline health care in hospitals. But they also provide places. They also provide a venue where research is actually conducted. Um, health charities, um, less, they're less likely to fund, uh, fund individuals in, in institutions. Um, and, and I've put a, a little tick here because actually what, what health charities are mainly focused on is not the senior investigators, but really getting people very junior. So they, it could be students or people that are very early on in their research career, or it could be even um, just, they've just started their own research programs, they're very early um, lead investigators. The, the area where health charities may mostly fund is the project funding. So building on the, the infrastructure and the people that are funded from other sources. Then hospital and university foundations tend to fund across the board again. So when it comes down to actual areas that are being supported by, um, by these funders in the country, um, the, the, the most, uh, most of the funds go to, um, not surprisingly, finding out more about um, early detection, diagnosis, and prognosis, and, and better treatments. Um, and so that, that represents around close to 70% of the research funding, and this is in 2011. There's, there's around 20% that's focused on biology, and this is really understanding the kind of basic, um, improving our knowledge at the very molecular level, like the cell level of prostate cancer. There's very little funding going in etiology, understanding the cause of prostate cancer, and even less in prevention, intervention, so really about programs that can actually be launched to, to reduce someone's risk of prostate cancer, and also in cancer control survivorship and outcomes issues. So this is, really, this is a really broad area that focuses on behavioral research, psychosocial research, health services research, education research in these areas. So this gives a really good sense about kind of what, what the strengths are in a country and where, where current funding is, um, is, is, uh, is, is invested. So I mentioned before that the, the other thing we wanted to do is reach out to, to um, uh, well-informed people about prostate cancer and get, get their views about what, what, they, well, the, what they felt should be the, the new directions in prostate cancer research. So we, we, we conducted uh, two surveys, the first one of researchers um, and the second are uh, patients, survivors, their families, and uh, concerned members of the public. So these were achieved through online surveys. We actually managed to get uh, 129 researcher respondents, which is around about 40% of the, the group that we actually reached out to, which is a pretty good response rate, given I, I, I've, I've conducted these surveys before, and that's uh, to get researchers' attention for that, 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 many, that many researchers' attention is, is, is pretty successful. 
Um, but not as successful as the, the second survey, which we, we had over 600 respondents to the public survey, and this is, this is overwhelming. And again, I've conducted surveys of the public on, on cancer issues before and, and been very disappointed with the response, and this is, this is a, a, a remarkable, and I'm very, very I'm pleased. If I, I'm, I'm very glad that, if, uh, that, that, that you all supported this cause, and uh, hopefully um, um, we've taken, taken into account some of your uh, comments on this. Um, so, so the highlights of the surveys, researchers actually emphasized that collaboration was one of the greatest strengths of, this, uh, of, of the community, and that's not surprising in Canada. We all know that we all collaborate very well with one another, and this, is, this, this group here is testament to that collaboration in, in, uh, in the support groups. Um, for research gra gaps, um, the biggest uh, um, gap identified by researchers was, was in the area of biomarkers. This is actually molecular markers that could identify um, that could uh, be used to diagnose disease or predict um, uh, better treatments for disease. The, the one question that we asked that was common to both surveys was about what, what would be the most pressing question um, about prostate cancer that could be answered through research. Um, about 40% of researchers thought that it was, it was actually that it's related to biomarkers again. It's that how do we um, distinguish between indolent disease, aggressive disease, who to treat and who not to treat. But for the, for the, the, um, the public survey, um, half the respondents suggested that it was actually either improving treatments, reducing side effects, or finding the cause. So it's a very, we've had different views from, from the two surveys. And you can actually find the full report from the surveys on prostatecancer.ca slash research. Um, the one other question we asked uh, in the public survey was um, about satisfaction in prostate cancer research. So, so how have we had the impact that, we, we, um, that, that you expect and, and that we, we, um, we set out to, to, to obtain? And uh, so, so in this chart, the, the light blue is satisfaction, and, and as it gets darker, it's less satisfied. So survivors, uh, well, one thing I should note is that um, in that 611, we had um, a pretty good split of, uh, of, of these four categories. There was well over 100 in each of these categories, which again, I was, I was really, really pleased about. Um, so survivors were the most satisfied about these, um, about the, these progress in prostate cancer research. Um, the uh, people, the guys currently undergoing treatment were least satisfied. And not surprisingly, the, uh, the concerned members of the public were, uh, were more likely to be neither satisfied nor satisfied. So, so um, I, I, it'd be interesting to find out from you uh, whether, whether you're surprised by that, um, that finding. But this is a very useful um, uh, um, measure to take and it's something that we're going to continue to look at in future because obviously getting, getting the views of people like you about you know, where, where you feel um, how happy you are with the, with the progress we're making in prostate cancer research is important. So, so when the, the, the panel got together and really synthesized the information that we, we, we gathered from the, the surveys and the scans, we, we developed three um, research priorities. And the first is about innovative research. We want to fund research that's going to have the, the greatest impact. And it's got to be innovative. It's got to be significant. It's got to be globally competitive research. We want to put ourselves at the forefront in, internationally in, in prostate cancer research. The second is in team science. And this is really... As I mentioned before, um, collaboration was seen as one of the strengths in the research community, so we want to capitalize on that. We want to actually give the researchers the funds they want to do, they need, they need to have to, to really foster that collaboration and, may, and, and, and really achieve something where the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, so actually get multi-province collaboration. Uh, and the last is about talented people, and this speaks to the idea of actually getting that next generation of prostate cancer researchers, supporting people early in their careers, because we, as I said before, we know that they stay in the field once we, if we get them early enough. So we've, we've developed a number of programs that can, that can address these issues. And the first is a team grant program. Again, it, so that's really getting to that second priority about team science. Um, Rising Star Awards, these are, these are about um, talented people, getting them early in their careers. It's, this is a funding um, uh, researchers that are in the first five years of their uh, research career, M much like the Clinician Scientist Awards that we've funded in the past, but we're broadening it, not just to clinicians, but to actually anyone involved in, in prostate cancer research. So they could be a, a basic lab researcher, or they could be a behavioral researcher, or a survivorship researcher. We want to open the door to every, any, any prostate cancer researcher that has good ideas and ha w will likely have a good uh, career in prostate cancer. Uh, and both of these programs we've, um, we've, we've launched in the summer. We actually uh, 
uh, uh, if you recall from the, the timeline from the strategy, we, 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 we launched the strategy in, in June and, and very quickly followed up with launching a team grant program and the Rising Star Awards. So the next three, so the discovery, the discovery grants we're going to launch very soon, and these are really a, a kind of an evolution from our pilot grant awards, again, very early in the discovery phase of research programs. Um, the targeted request for application, this is, this is really um, uh, almost a placeholder, and this, this, this brings in some flexibility to be able to seize opportunities when, when they come along, and so we're actually, uh, this is something where we can actually target specific areas of prostate cancer research, and this is um, something we'll be looking at in the next year to, to identify what, what we're going to fund in this, this, this area. And lastly, clinical trials, and this speaks to the idea that, that what we heard from in the public survey, that it's about improving treatments and reducing side effects. And so if we can actually fund clinical trials that actually improve treatments, um, then, then, we're, then we know we're having the impact we want to have. Um, so there's other aspects of the strategy. We want to make sure that we're, we're, we're organized well, and so we want to make sure that the... Uh, that we have a great peer review process. So we make the selection, how we select projects is the right way. And, and, and we don't want to be burdening the researchers to, to a degree where they're putting an application in, putting a, a long application in um, and, and then waiting six months until they, they get funded. Um, we want to fund great ideas quickly. Um, and, and equally, we want to actually, if, then, if, we, if we don't fund them, then we provide them with the, the, uh, what the reviewers think of the proposal so they can come back in a year's time with a better proposal. So, um, so we're committed to supporting the research community as well. And then also we want to put together an advisory structure that, can, that, can, that, that really will take the place of the panel and advise us as we implement this research strategy. And it's going to be comprised of prostate, prominent prostate cancer researchers in the country and maybe some from overseas. But also it's important that we have uh, non-scientists involved in this process as well. Um, so, so the question is, how do we make sure that we're funding the best research? Well, we put together a, um, a peer review process. So we put together a panel of researchers, panel of experts to evaluate every proposal that we receive. And this is a, um, the panel that we had for our pilot grant competition this last year, or this year, I guess. Um, and, and you can see that it's, it, it, it oh, excuse me, um, we actually have people from across the country, from Vancouver to, uh, uh, in this panel, we didn't have anyone from out east, but we usually do, um, as, from a scientific perspective. But we, all, we have uh, researchers from all areas of research, both PhDs, MDs, RADONCs, MEDONCs. Again, you know, we cover the whole waterfront. Um, and, and, and most importantly, we have a community representative, a non-scientist. And actually, this non-scientist was from, from Atlantic Canada. Um, and, and one thing that I've noticed in, in my time in research administration is this, this person is, is critical for this panel. It's, it's probably the most important position on the panel because they, they more often than not ask that, that question, so what? So, you know, it could be the best science, but if it's not going to have the impact we all want to have, then why are we going to fund it? And so it's a very critical um, piece of the whole process. So um, the... The reviewers are asked to review the, um, each application, how relevant it is to the mission, the importance and impact of the work, how creative and innovative it is, you know, is it, is it, is it robust methodology, is, you know, is it, is it feasible, um, they evaluate the experience of the investigators, does, it, does the investigator have this institution supporting them, and, and you know, is it, is it globally competitive, is, it, is this really putting us on the forefront of, of prostate cancer science? So the other part is, you know, how, how do you measure the success of the, of the programs itself and the strategy? Well, we evaluate. We're going to evaluate and evaluate and evaluate more. We want to make sure that we're, devo we're, we're developing the right programs for survivors, but also for researchers to have the impact we want to have. And, and if we're not, then we'll, we'll, we'll refine the programs to make sure we are having the impact we want to have. So I'm going to leave it there, and I, I want to introduce, I think Stephen already introduced uh, Maureen to you. So Maureen is the Director of Support Services, and... Uh, uh, Maureen's going to talk about the, um, the, the, the new programs we're going to be launching in, in, in support services. And I, ca I can say, I know Steve, Steve says some wonderful words about Maureen, but more, you know, I've, I've rarely had the, have been fortunate to work with someone that's as, as uh, creative, passionate, compassionate, and dedicated as Maureen. And, and, and I think that she deserves a lot of credit for really driving this agenda forward and, and delivering the programs we're going to deliver over the next year. Maureen.